Hey everyone, it's Project SPC and I'm here today to do a review video on the Comrie N95 Mini PC. Thanks to them for sending this over for review. All thoughts and opinions are my own. This is their Intel N95 version with 8GB of RAM and 256 of storage. And yeah, it makes a really great little storage server or office type PC with a hint of like gaming. I'll cover ports, specs, and do some office tasks and like gaming to see how it performs. But yeah, it comes in this silver case that's 5 inch by 5 inch. And uh, on the side here, we have uh, exhaust and a VGA port. And on the back, we have a headphone jack, gigabit Ethernet, two HDMI 4K 60 Hertz, a USB 3.0, and a DC input. And on the other side, we have two USB 3.0s and one USB 2.0 and the power button. On the bottom here, we have a fan intake and uh, VESA mount. In the box, we have the HDMI cable. We have a DC input that's uh, 12 volts and two and a half amps. Got a little instruction booklet. And we have a little VESA mount here, along with the screws that go with it. And if I flip it over, you can see the VESA mounts here. Let's open it up and there's one screw here. After you get that out, you can slide that little latch there and the top will pop off and it'll show us a SATA SSD or hard drive uh, slot. And we can see the little power and data connector down there on the bottom. Now if we take those three screws out and pull this top off, we can see the stick of RAM. It is so dim. I thought there might be easy access to the SSD, but it doesn't look like it. Under the hood, we have the Intel N95 CPU. It's a 12th gen CPU featuring four little cores. Now, if you didn't know, Alder Lake introduced a little big core structure in the Intel CPUs. So these aren't hyper threaded. It's just four core, four thread, but these can go up to 3.4 gigahertz, which is really impressive considering they are little cores. For graphics, we have the Intel UHD graphics, and these are XE based, so they are the newer generation of graphics core from Intel. They do a lot better job than the previous architectures, but with 16 units, you're not going to get a lot out of it. We will test some gaming a little bit later on in this video to see what it can do. This has a single stick of DDR4 2666 megahertz RAM, and this one is an 8GB, but you can always get a larger stick. Just remember, it's not going to be dual channel. Here we have a 4K video and stats for nerds are up in the corner and during the first few seconds there was like 34 or 35 drop frames but after it started buffering we've only had one or two drop frames since so once the video does get going the CPU is definitely capable of 4K playback. We're playing a game called Ember Knights, and it's a little indie game, roguelite, and it's it's actually pretty fun. We are at 1080p, and we're getting all over 60 frames a second, so yeah, definitely playable on the CPU. I wanted to test out a three-dimensional game and here we have a game called Super Flight and uh, yeah you can see the statistics came up and we are over 30 frames a second so this is definitely playable 1080p 15 watts on this little CPU. Here's Hades, and we're running at 1080p. It looks like some sort of V-Sync is on. Even though there's no option in the menu, we're stuck at 30 frames a second. That is the frame rate of my capture card right now. So yeah, maybe it's trying to match that. Otherwise, gameplay is very smooth and definitely playable.
And the last game I wanted to test out was Counter-Strike Global Offense. This is an old game, but a good game. I'm running at 1080p and I'm at 15 watts, mix of medium and high settings. And uh, yeah, it's definitely playable. You're gonna notice, notice two things. I don't have the stats up. For some reason, I couldn't get those to display. And you're gonna notice that there's a lag between when I move the controller and when I can actually see that input. It's because I'm using a 4K cam link and there is no output to a monitor. I actually have to play this on my other computer screen and there is a little bit of a lag, which takes some getting used to. Here's the Geekbench score, single core, 971, multi core, 2,692. And that kind of puts it in the class of desktops from fourth or fifth gen Intel, which is pretty respectable considering that this is a 15 watt low power chip. I'll leave a link to this product in the description below, but here's the Amazon page. It's $159 for a gig and 256 of storage. There's a $30 coupon and I will leave a discount code in the description below. There is a 16 gigabyte and 512 gigabyte storage for 207 and there's some coupons you can apply as well. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit the like button, maybe even subscribe and thanks for watching.